Hi, Griffpatch here, um, and I want to show you today how to create a simple scrolling game in Scratch. Uh, it's going to be really basic because there's lots to do with scrolling games when things get complicated, but I want to really try and keep this as easy as possible. So this is the little project I've put together here. Um, you can see I've got Scratch Cat. I've got uh, some things moving in. I can move around, and if I move to the right, the level scrolls, and all is good. So let's start off with a completely blank project create new project so what i'll try and do is go through quite quickly creating the project and then maybe i'll explain in more detail afterwards let's see how that goes so new project starts there's scratch cats give it a name scrolling project okay and i'm going to name my scratch cat as player so we know who he is this is our player and i make him so he moves left and right only uh points in direction left and right only okay so backgrounds let's add a background from the library we can choose blue sky now problem is that can't scroll it's a background backgrounds don't scroll and you can't get away from that i'm afraid with a stage so let's create a new sprite and we're going to call this background okay and this is not going to rotate at all good uh, and we're going to take a nice background that we had there and I'm going to drag it into my sprite. Okay. And now I'm going to change my actual stage background to white. So we can see there's this white area behind. And now we can move our background unlike before. So that's the basis. Let's get rid of this empty costume. So we've just got a nice costume of blue sky. Okay. Uh, I'm going to add some scripts in here. Uh, first off, let's go into the player sprite because this is the where this is where thing happens. This is where things kick off. So I'll have a green flag inside there. Um, I am going to add a variable called scroll x. You'll see that a lot in scrolling projects. We could call it camera x, but we like scroll, and it's going to be for all sprites, so they all can see that. And we're going to set that to zero at the very beginning, so that's where we start scrolling from. We'll keep that there for now. Um, now we want to have some broadcasts. Uh, in my projects, I very rarely have more than one green flag um, clicked. I like to keep things in control, my own control, so I don't like them running in all different sprites. You never know quite how projects start up, so let's keep it simple by having one and then broadcasting from there so we are in control. So I'm going to broadcast setup. So everything that wants to happen can be set up in that broadcast and it won't uh, continue running until that's finished because I've got broadcast and wait. And then we're going to do some more setting up. Not more setting up, sorry. Start getting some loops running. So let's start a broadcast without this. This is not a wait broadcast. This is a normal broadcast. And I'm going to call this player loop. OK and a receiver for that in this player sprite. There it is, that's ready. And I'm going to have another broadcast in here called um, camera loop. This will come clearer later. And another one called background loop. And finally, one more I'm going to call other loops. OK, this is my foundation for starting loops of the code off in the right order. This is the order I want them to run in. So at the moment, there's nothing receiving these broadcasts, but that's fine. We're going to do that later. So uh, in the background, let's have a receiver for the background loop. Oh, that's convenient. That's what I want. So the background loop. Uh, no, it's not what I want. I'm lying. Sorry. What I wanted was set up. OK, so at the very beginning, we want to set up where our background is. So for that, for now, I'm going to stick it as a go to zero, zero. OK, let's just click that there. Nicely positioned right to where it should be. Uh, I also want to make sure that the cat is in front of the background. So let's click on the cat and we'll stick. Where's the go to front? Let's hit the go to Actually, no, you don't have to do that, do you? Uh, yes, you do. OK, go to front. There he is. Good. I was missing Mr. Cat. Right. 
what next so let's get the cat so that he falls down onto the uh, floor so uh, let's add some stuff into the player scripts now let's have a forever loop within our player loop receiver and in there we will have a motion and we'll change our y position by minus eight that will just make him loop straight down towards the floor if i run that in fact so much so he falls through it which is fine let's put a let's put a go to zero zero above there so we can press it again and run it okay there he goes falling down no um gradual gravitation stuff in this project no uh, nice smooth moving i'm just gonna make him fall down at a constant speed just for simplicity right so we want to stop him on the ground so let's put an if after he's been moved down we will check to see whether he's touching the ground or not in this case i'm using color sensing so if he's touching brown then i will move him back up again simple as that so now he should just stop on the ground there beautiful okay and now we need a little bit of movement so you can move left and right otherwise we're not going to be able to scroll very much are we so let's put an if in here if sensing if the key is pressed and it's the right arrow then we want to change our position and again i'm going to choose eight so now if i press the right arrow well let's run the project first right arrow there we go he moves however he just moves off the screen and that's not quite what we're achieving at the end so what do we need to do next so the secret to scrolling is you don't want the cat to look like he's moving along the level you want the level to look like it's moving behind the cat so the, what we need to do here is get when the cat moves to the right you want the like the camera to move to the right too so the whole it looks like the whole thing is moving to the left so what we need to do is change that scroll x um so if we go into the background we want this to be moving now when the cat moves so let's get our new event receiver and this is the background loop like we had before which is great we have a forever loop okay now we've got a scroll x that's great so we're going to reposition this background set the x position of the background to be this might look a bit complicated it's not it's good it's easy you'll get used to it zero minus scroll x that means the negative version of scroll x so if scroll x changes by 10 our background will move to the left by 10. Um, okay you can test that if i run the project i should now be able to put a set scroll to a value like 10 and click that and it should there we go see that move back to the left so we, in fact we get change change by 10. every time i click that it'll scroll the background to the left beautiful okay so in my scratch cat now i'm going to add another receiver and this receiver is the camera loop so we're broadcasting that there so after this player loop has run through and we've moved our cat i'm now going to move the background so that both the cat and the background will move to meet to where the cat's moved to to try and keep the cat in the middle of the screen so what we want to do is look for the cat having moved to the right so if we go into motion and we look for x position there we go so if the x position of the cat is greater than zero so he's moved to the right what we want to do is change the scroll x by eight and this is important we need to move the cat to the left by eight so it's in line with the scrolling so it scrolls the camera moves to the right cat therefore moves to the left so if we run that now and move to the right nothing happens ah see my mistake there i'm very sorry look at this so i've got a camera loop and there's no loop in there so stick a forever loop around that let's try it again okay move to the right there we go so now when i move to the right the level moves to the left and i stay stationary this is quite cool 
fact, if you play around with this, you'll see it's actually quite flexible. So if I change the scroll to 2 and minus 2 and run that again, if I move to the right, the level slowly scrolls to meet me. So you can do some quite cunning effects here. But for now, let's keep him in the middle. Let's move him the same amount, 8. And that keeps him nice and in line with the scrolling. And now you see the next problem. If you scroll the level across, you end up with a big gap. Um, you need more level. So let's add some more level in. OK, for this, I'm going to change my background. So what I need is a new variable called level x. I can, and this has to be for this sprite only. It's very important because each, each screen of the level has to have its own position. So let's add that in there. Get rid of the on the screen and start by setting level x to zero. This is in the setup stage, not the running stage setup. So what we're going to do is use some clones here. So we're going to set the level to zero. We're going to clone ourselves, create a clone of myself. And then I'm going to change x by 480. That's a full screen width. Uh, right. And now down here where we've got the receiver, rather than being position zero, we're going to put our level X into there. And now run that. And now you see this, we have two screens. If I run that again, first screen, second screen. That was easy, wasn't it? Um, and of course, what you can do in here then is create some different parts of the level. So I'll duplicate the costume and I'll add a little bit of something else slightly different to this one. I'll add in a bit of um, uh, in the first sprite. Let's add in a bit of platform here like this. And in the second one, I'll add in. Oh, ah, don't do that. I'll add in a fluffy cloud. Good. Now, if you go in here, so when we're cloning our background, what I need to do is change the costumes. So if I set the costume to begin with to be our first costume, blue sky, and then I just put a next costume after the clone. So now run that. Ah, now I'm stuck in the middle. Let's change our position of our little cat here. So rather than being zero, zero, let's put him up a bit higher, a um, hundred higher. There we go. So he's on this, falls down, and there's our fluffy cloud. Excellent. So what if I want even more screens? Well, of course, that's really easy now. You can see in here, all we need to do is duplicate up from the clone like that. And that will keep going through to the next costume each time. So cloud, and then we'll go back to this first one again. OK, and you could loop that around and create lots and lots of those. OK. So maybe what might be worthwhile is putting in another movement so we can move left as well. So let's just duplicate up the move right and change it. So that this is now a left and that moves him by minus eight Run that. Okay, so I can move left, I can move right, I can move left and it doesn't scroll back. Now this is a common feature in lots of games like Super Mario and things. You, you can keep progressing, but you can't move back. Um, and that's a design decision. You can choose whether your game wants to be like that or not. It uh, actually is very easy to do both uh, both types of scrolling. If we wanted it to scroll back and forward, we can change this scrolling here to allow for different directions, for example. So I could put, uh, what's the best way of doing this? Let me have a quick think. No, let's not do that. Um, so what we can do if you want it to scroll exactly the same as, oh, let's stop the program. Let's change scroll X by position X and set X position to zero. Now that, if I run that, will now keep it in line, but I can go back as well. Yeah, that works pretty well. So depending on what you want, so this now, if a cat moves to the right, it changes the scrolling by how much he's moved by. 
or again to the left it changes it by how far he's moved to the left and then it puts me back in the middle so that's the alternative way of doing it but i'll take that out because i was trying to write a, a game that scrolled with my cat to the right but not to the left okay now next thing to notice is how sprites don't move off the screen very nicely um, if i add a new sprite here and i'm going to call this apple and i'm going to add a costume from the library let's try and find an apple i think it's there we go good old apple there we go oh there we go apple okay now objects in games have to scroll of course with the background so we need to uh, where's my cat gone why has he disappeared behind having to bring him back to the front looks to front there he is apple to front there we go right so this apple needs to move with the background just like the background moved with the scroll x so let's put in some scripts now i've already got the receivers ready so we've got init uh, not in it so i set up i call it this time sometimes it's called init to initialize but we're calling it setup uh, this is where we need to position the apple and again we're going to have to have a special apple x for this sprite only okay set apple x2 and the position i want him to be let's put him at um uh let's put it slightly further off screen so that we can scroll along to find him let's put it at 300 uh and go to set his y position to be zero it's fine right in the middle of the screen vertically and then we need our event receiver for the other loops right good all other things other than the background and the player will go under other loop that's what i'm deciding anyhow so forever loop in there all we need to do is position him for now so that's the same as the background so let me just copy that in to the apple and instead of level x it needs to be apple x the right click there to do that but the scroll x is the same so now if i run that there is the apple in our level but look see how he stays on the side of the screen on the left or on the right and i haven't reached him yet that is the problem with scrolling games in scratch scratch does not allow objects sprites to go off the screen not completely they always stay on by between well it's 12 pixels off the screen i believe but because they have wide borders sometimes they can be uh, this is the outline of the apple they can actually stick out even more so i tend to add a border around each scrolling project of about 16 pixels to hide these things that are off, meant to be off screen but aren't off screen so let's add in another sprite called border like so doesn't have to rotate and all we need to do to initialize it is add in the setup and position it at zero zero and it has to be at the front go to front costume now we want to draw this nice and neat so if we zoom in and we want it in bitmap mode it makes it easier now scroll the screen to the bottom left now you see his little scroll in a bit more actually zoom in a bit more if i scroll to the very bottom you'll notice that this checkerboard pattern is quite a useful thing if i click on block and black and filled so each one of these blocks is four pixels so to be 16 pixels we need it to be four of them so we need to draw a block that is covering four of these okay like that so it's perfectly sized to be four high so if we zoom out click on the select tool select that square bit of it and then drag it out sideways that means we have a perfectly sized four pixel uh, 16 pixel high now we can zoom in and do the same for the vertical so draw a cube that's four across like so zoom out 
select and drag up oh, like that. Zoom in to the top left. Draw, if you can, four pixels. It actually looks like I could drag that out. So maybe if I zoom out now before I, oh yes, this is easier. I'll do that, yes, better. Zoom in, scroll to the left, scroll to the bottom, draw your four, like that, zoom out and drag it up. Excellent, so there, perfect. So if I run that now. Okay, you can now see Apple is not visible, it's behind that black. If I scroll across, there he is. And if I go across further to the left, can't see him, perfect. There you go, we see. Uh, and you can add movement scripts and things into Apple. So I've got this other loops here running, which is setting his position to where he's scrolling to. But you can actually add more loops in of like type other. So for example, in here, and this is the reason I'm using the loops in this way, is I can put in a repeat, say uh, 20, and I can make him move, uh, change Y by three, and then repeat 20, change Y by minus three, for example, and run that. And if I come across, there you go. And now if you want him to move sideways, you be careful because you do not want to use change X because the Apple's X position is no longer defined by his um, scratches X position. You have to use your data variable Apple X. So if I wanted him to move sideways, let's do another loop that makes him move sideways. So this time I'll make him do this very quickly. So I'll maybe no, let's do it even more. So four, just loops of four. I'm going to change Apple X by eight. And on the other one, I'm going to change it by minus eight. Now run that. Let's go and find him. There, see? I have to use the Apple X because as you scroll, his X position changes. So it needs to be controlled by his Apple X, which we set at the top there. Cool. And that's pretty much it. Uh, I hope that was really useful. I'm going to expand on this and add lots more things to it. Do comment, um, love the video, and tell me what you think. Um, there's so much more to cover, but uh, that will do for now, I think. Thanks for watching.